from a very young age, I felt a call to the ministry, but I also felt a call to art. And so I would draw and feel guilty about it because I kind of grew up in a fundamentalist um, uh, Baptist um, uh, background and I went to Bible school to be a Baptist preacher and still drew on the side and couldn't figure out how to bring art and faith together and um, and and I fell in love with this altarpiece the Eisenheim altarpiece I saw this and it was like I love this it, what is this it doesn't fit in my tradition it's not, you know, we don't have altar pieces in Baptist churches, and so <laughs> it was, um, so it was that real, that journey of wrestling with, you know, God made me an artist, but he also called me to serve the church, and how, how do I bring those two things together? I had to wrestle through, like a, a lot of artists, wrestle through um, whether art is something that you do for yourself or whether it's for uh, for God, for your neighbor. And I started to realize that it's all of those. So Willett Hauser began in the 19th century, in, in a time when we were seeing Europe and European windows, and they wanted to do windows like the old cathedrals, and so that was what William Willett did. You know, all the dark blues, all the all the neo-Gothic medieval windows, and that was what they kind of became known for. Uh, they began in Philadelphia and and uh, uh, became nationwide, and they've done international work. And that was the Willett Studio and. They were uh, bought out by a Hauser studio, or merged with Hauser studio from Winona, Minnesota, um, about 40 years ago. They became one company. The design aspect of the stained glass process, uh, the designers take, take a concept from the sales team and under our art director, and we collaborate with the client to to create a vision of, of what they want to do with their space. So uh, we definitely work with the architecture and, uh, and with the client's uh, vision, um, their theology, and, and try to form that liturgical space in a way that, um, that will beautify their worship and um, that really uh, expresses their their vision and their theology. So I'm also a designer and I manage the design department. Uh, so right now we're a department of four um, and we handle a lot of different tasks, not just the design itself, but uh, we also have to handle some of the engineering aspects of it. Uh, a lot hangs on the window the end product fitting into an opening. So we have to be pretty sharp with math and know how to use a tape measure. Um, so like, you know, I, what we design can't just be a rough concept that we toss to somebody else to make it into a, into a window. We, we really provide the roadmap for all the processes that follow from, you know, glass selection and, and cutting and painting and glazing and barring uh, that, that makes it into a real, you know, a, a real window, a finished product. It is a constant challenge of the interface of technology because we have more tools at our disposal than um, Shark, Colm Sharkey, who was a great designer for Willett Hauser 30 years ago. And, and so we really have to wrestle with a lot of those tools and figure out how to use them in a uh, a way that's um, beautiful and, and, and actually helps the process. Because sometimes technology can really bog us down because now a client is able to zoom in and look at the tiniest detail on an image that will send them through the computer. And so it's like in some ways we're, we, we end up doing more work because of technology sometimes. Like, oh wow, we really have to 
smooth this out, you know, any, anything that your eye might on a normal human scale not notice becomes, you know, we, we never know the platform that the client's going to see things in. So technology is a double-edged sword. It, it helps in a lot of ways and it also creates new challenges. But uh, for the things that, that we do here that you'll see around in the gallery, um, there's very little, if any, of it that could be automated. You know, we, we'll use a CAD program to automate the numbering of the pieces, but uh, somebody is physically laying that piece out on a, on a sheet of glass and deciding what areas of color or density to avoid and where to cut that piece of glass on a sheet and somebody else is cutting it by hand. Um, and so it's, it seems like um, there's very little of that that a machine could do or, or a computer could do that, um, that would you know, essentially replace a human brain and a human hand doing the work. You know, whether it's, whether it's art that's devotional or whether it's like grand scale liturgical stuff, um, you, can, you can preach Christ through that. And that was very liberating for me. Just like a theology of vocation that uh, you know, embraced those gifts and was able to, to use them to God's glory. It's not been a straight road. It's been, you know, a lot of, I, and, I, and I love pastoring and I love doing artwork. And it's been exciting to see them both coming closer and closer together. And um, so that's, that's hopefully serving the church by helping them. Um, uh, Irenaeus, you know, said the, uh, the life of man is the vision of God, you know. And, and so if I can help the church see God more through art, then that's hopefully something I can do.